critical intelligence reports have been published. Russia wants to mobilize 200,000 troops to attack Kiev. Published intelligence reports mobilized Kiev. Ukraine's military presence on its northern and eastern borders continues to increase. On the eastern front, Ukrainian army made great progress. Many settlements were liberated from the Russians. But Putin's plans have been revealed. Russia is waiting for the world to freeze. Western countries announce that they will provide Ukraine with all the necessary defense systems and weapons. Great support from European Union to Ukraine, the Moscow economy will no longer function. Putin's worst nightmare is coming true. Ukraine is now very close to European Union. The Kremlin continues to make threats. He announced very harsh reactions on the Kiev front. The battle on the Eastern Front will begin in a few hours. Ukrainian army is ready for its biggest operations to seize Donetsk. The Great War is about to begin. Ukrainian Armed Forces Commander-in-Chief Valery Zaluzhny shared critical intelligence reports at a press conference at noon. Zaluzhny, the Russian mobilization continues in secret. We think that the number of people who will join Russian army exceeds 200,000. The Kremlin and Russian armed forces put tremendous pressure on anyone over the mobilization age. Some of the Chechens and Russians voluntarily joined the army to fight. We think that Russia has a military reserve of 1.5 million people in total. They will gradually increase the number of personnel serving in the army. The Russians will try to raise siege Kiev with about 200,000 men. But we are aware of this situation and intelligence reports keep coming. We will inflict the greatest defeat in history on the Russians, he said wisely. Zaluzhny, Russia is currently experiencing a huge arms and ammunition shortage. They are trying to send military equipment, weapons and ammunition to 200,000 soldiers. In this process, the decisions taken by our Western partners should be tougher. If we can stop Moscow's production, we can drive the Russians out of our land completely. We don't want anyone to panic. We have received intelligence reports that we cannot explain. We know very well what to do. He stated that the Russians will never be able to hold on to the territory of Ukraine. After the statements, the intensity of the clashes increased considerably. Russia was expected to launch a powerful and final attack on Kiev. However, in the early days of the war, Russian army used a very large part of its strength. Although Russian army launched an all-out offensive, it could not besiege Kiev for months and inflicted record losses. The biggest blow to the Moscow economy came in this process. In addition, Ukrainian army had great shortcomings in military equipment, defense systems, weapons and ammunition. Now, as a result of agreements with Western countries, Ukrainian army has started to have an army that meets NATO criteria. On the first day of the war, Russia was very strong and attacked with all its might. Ukrainian army, on the other hand, completely stopped Russian army, although it was very inadequate and incomplete. I don't think Russian army can win this war anymore, because there are many developments that are not reflected in the press. I think that as a result of the intelligence received by Ukrainian army, great measures were taken. Knowing that Russian army will attack with 200,000 soldiers puts Ukrainian forces in a more advantageous position. Russian army of 200,000 might come to the point of disintegration at the first major casualties. Because two months after the mobilization is announced, these soldiers will be sent directly to the front. But Ukrainian military has been training its soldiers against Russia for years, and with Russia's attacks on Ukraine, large numbers of Ukrainian soldiers have been intensively trained in Europe. I think that a large number of specially trained soldiers who joined Ukrainian army will play a big role in this process. Because we see that Russia has great difficulties in terms of experienced soldiers. Both Ukrainian and Russian armies know very well how valuable an experienced soldier is. Immediately after the critical statements, Ukrainian army announced that it had made great progress on the Eastern Front. Ukrainian forces made an advance of about 2 kilometers in the Dybrova region of Luhansk. Ukrainian armed forces was completely cleared of the Dybrova region from the Wagner Group. In total, 150 Wagner members were neutralized. We think 500 Wagner members were injured. Russian forces, which suffered heavy losses as a result of the sudden attacks, had to retreat. The area was completely under control. 
After the statements made, it was seen that Ukrainian army made shipments to the region and established a wide defense line. On the other hand, Ukrainian armed forces announced that 600 Russian soldiers were neutralized in one day. In addition, Russian army lost 10 armored vehicles, 6 heavy battle tanks, 14 artillery systems, 30 unmanned aerial vehicles, 1 fuel tanker and 2 special war equipment in one day. In this process, the units of Ukrainian armed forces repelled the attacks of Russian forces on the settlements of Verk Nokomiansk, Yakovlivka, Solder, Bakhmut, Vessel, and Marinka in the Donetsk Oblast. Russians carried out 31 airstrikes and 8 missile attacks on infrastructure facilities in the Donetsk Oblast. They also carried out 61 attacks using multiple rocket systems. Attacks continue on the southern front as well. On the Zaporizhia and Kherson fronts, Russian troops continued to attack the positions and infrastructure of Ukrainian armed forces along the right bank of the Dnipro River. As a result of the attacks, material damage occurred in 19 regions. These include Vremovka, Novopil in Donetsk Oblast, Holyopilsk in Zaporizhia Oblast, Orihiv, Melitokmikka, Novovorin Savka, Osakorivka, Novo Tyvinka, Tokarivka, Yantarn in Kursan Oblast and the city of Kursan. In the past 24 hours, Ukrainian aircraft have carried out 13 attacks on Russian military personnel and equipment clusters and 5 attacks on Russian anti-aircraft missile system emplacements. Also, the rocket forces and artillery units of armed forces of Ukraine struck a fuel and lubricant storage point, where there were two command posts and eight Russian military personnel clusters. While mutual attacks continued, a major sanction decision was announced from the European Union. European Union member states have agreed on the nine sanctions package, which includes the addition of nearly 200 individuals and institutions and three Russian banks to the sanctions list, a ban on exports to dual-use products, and a ban on mining investments. In the post made on the official social media account of Czech Republic, the Presidency of European Union, the ambassadors agreed in principle on the sanctions package prepared against Russia within the scope of European Union's support to Ukraine. In the post, it was stated that the approval process of the ninth sanctions package against Russia will proceed with a written procedure and will be completed tomorrow. Information on the content of the new sanctions package has not been shared yet. Member states were negotiating the details of this package. In this process, Russia's unlawful attacks brought Europe and Ukraine closer together. Putin does not want Ukraine to join the European Union. Because if Ukraine becomes a member of the European Union, Russia will not be able to attack Ukraine. If Ukraine becomes a member of the European Union, all member states will be deemed to have entered a direct war with Russia. With Ukraine potentially on track to join European Union, European Council last week agreed on a legislative package that would allow European Union to finance Ukraine economically until next year. The package will provide Ukraine with a 10-year grace period of 18 billion euros. A statement from the Council of Europe explains how member states will cover most of the interest costs. The aim is to provide initial support for sustainable post-war reconstruction with the aim of providing short-term financial assistance financing Ukraine's urgent needs, restoring critical infrastructure, and supporting Ukraine on its path to European integration, the statement said. After the statements made, the tension between Europe and the Kremlin increased considerably.